inadequate access to water supply, sanitation, and hygiene cause the deaths of more than 1.5 million children each year. I think the most pressing issue regarding water is sanitation, actually. I think that we have lost an opportunity to make World Water Day also focus on sanitation. It gets mentioned, but it really should be the thing we're worrying about most. We are here at World Water Day because um, NRDC believes that lack of safe drinking water and access to clean, to safe sanitation is the world's largest environmental health crisis. The most pressing issue in the global water crisis is the fact that more than 4,000 children die every day from drinking contaminated water. The problem is huge, but it can be addressed. And I don't think we've ever seen in this country another event that has brought together so many different sectors, um, uh, private citizen sectors, from N uh, NGOs, uh, corporations, foundations, uh, universities, uh, faith groups, the United States government, coming together and saying we can respond to this problem. We're here today to celebrate World Water Day and growing U.S. and Canadian public and private sector support for this important issue. It was apparent to our foundation over 20 years ago that water and sanitation are key building blocks to improving the quality of health, education, livelihoods, and the overall human well-being. Water is life. It is for this reason that the Hilton Foundation has already invested $80 million to address this need, and that its board recently approved another $50 million in grants over the next five years to increase safe water access. Without fresh water, you die. It comes as no surprise to the people in this room that nearly a billion people, one-sixth of the world's population, have no access to clean water. With many of you know, that 3.3 million people die yearly from waterborne health problems that we can cure. I was born and raised in Kenya, and I know all too well that Africa's water crisis threatens the health of its people and its prospects for economic growth. As part of our investments in the continent, we are deeply committed to working with African communities to tackle their safe water challenges. The dream is water for all, all for water. Six words that impact billions of life. One out of every seven human of the global population does not have access to safe drinking water, just one billion. The solution involves seven billion people. You are part of, this, you are part of this solution. Access to reliable supplies of clean water is a matter of human security. It's also a matter of national security. And that's why President Obama and I recognize that water issues are integral to the success of many of our major foreign policy initiatives. The United States is making major investments to combat preventable diseases and improve child survival through our global health initiative. Increasing access to safe drinking water, sanitation, and hygiene will help save lives that are now being lost to preventable diseases. In addition to that, women who gain access to sanitation, who are freed from the burden of walking for hours each day just to locate and carry water, will find it easier to invest time and energy in their families and communities. For the United States, water represents one of the great diplomatic and development opportunities of our time. It's not every day you find an issue where effective diplomacy and development will allow you to save millions of lives feed the hungry, empower women, advance our national security interests, protect the environment, and demonstrate to billions of people that the United States cares, cares about you and your welfare. Water is that issue. NGOs and nonprofits, including many of the organizations represented here, already play a vital role as implementers and advocates. Private philanthropic organizations, such as the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation and the Conrad and Hilton Foundation and Rotary International are also increasingly engaged on water and sanitation as well. It has always perplexed me as a, as a water guy, as someone who is concerned in public life with water, and then as somebody investing in water around the world, that the priority for it and the understanding of it, given its urgency and the human impact of contaminated water, is so large. And 
you look back at the history of international development efforts, they have been predicated on the assumption that energy, communication, and transport were the determinants of economic takeoff. Water was a nice to have afterthought, really, a middle class enthusiasm, as Senator Moynihan used to put it. And that is changing, and it's very exciting that it's changing. It's a tribute to the visionary and effective organizations in this room that it's changing as it is. It's a tribute also, I think, to the Secretary of State, who has nicely inserted the water priority and sanitation priority into development policy, where it belongs. Water is vital to the empowerment of women, and it is intimately tied to our efforts to address the ravages of climate change. We, in fact, have an opportunity to come together across faiths and across cultures to bring people together because water, without which life cannot be sustained, is also a shared symbol among all the world's religions. We know that abusing or hoarding it cannot be justified within our various faith traditions and our shared values. We know that God did not intend for 4,500 children to die every day for the lack of clean water and sanitation. We know that this is a solvable problem and that we have the humanitarian infrastructure and aid on the ground throughout this world in various networks, some of which are made possible by interfaith cooperation. We know that those many faith communities sponsor various on the ground water projects locally and regionally and that positive impact has been made and could be even more enormous. This issue has the opportunity to bring people together in Washington DC because this is not a red state, blue state, Republican, Democrat. This is an issue of our collective humanity and what we can do. What a terrific way to celebrate World Water Day by coming together and committing to carry this message forward and to make all the world's families safer, healthier, and more economically secure. But at the heart of any conversation dealing with water is the realization that actually we are talking about people. Water is managed by people, people consume water, it's that ability to manage and consume water in appropriate ways that make the biggest difference. Since our inception just a mere three years ago, uh, we have built partnerships between developing nation schools and schools in the United States. Nearly 300 schools, elementary, high school, middle school, college, have taken action to fund WASH in school projects around the world. By the end of June, this academic school year, H2O for Life and the actions of students in the United States will have funded close to 200 WASH projects. Our, our outreach has raised awareness about the water crisis to over 150,000 students in the US and has to help change the lives for over, uh, over 50,000 students in developing countries around the world who now have access to water, sanitation, and hygiene education. For every $1 we invest, we have a $34 rate of return. That's 3,400%. Sounds like a good investment. Um, I just figure at that point, at this point, knowing that water should be funded with an extra comma and a couple extra zeros. We endured climbing Kilimanjaro, myself, Jessica Biel, Lupe, Fiasco, Alexandra Cousteau, who I think is here. Um, but it's nothing in comparison to what people endure every single day around the world. It's nothing in comparison to that. So I just have one question I've been asking lately. If water is the most important thing to life, to the life of mankind, then isn't it the most important thing to fund? And if it's not, I'd like somebody to tell me what is. Women are, and girls, are the ones that are most affected by the lack of access to clean and, and safe drinking water. Uh, interestingly, in every community, they are the ones that walk the miles, 
uh, to fetch the water and to bring it back to their families. They're really the ones that um, have to be able to to um, carry out that role. And it's surprising because um, as culture has it, it's really the women that have to do it. It's an enormous burden on them. What's very, very important about the event today is that you see the combination of water advocates, of health advocates, global development advocates all coming together, including Secretary of State Hillary Clinton, to really symbolize not only the importance of the water issue, but the unity around the water issue. As we face this challenge, one thing that will endure is the United States' commitment to water issues. We are in this for the long haul. I'm convinced that if we empower communities and countries to meet their own challenges, expand our diplomatic efforts, make sound investments, foster innovation, and build effective partnerships, we can make real progress together and seize this historic opportunity.